have a nice day today's topic is inversion and eversion in subtala joints there are two movements possible one is the inversion and the other is eversion inversion is a movement in which the medial border of the foot is elevated so that the sole faces medially eversion is a movement in which the lateral border of the foot is elevated so that the sole faces laterally these movements can be performed voluntarily only when the foot is off the ground when the foot is on the ground these movements helps to adjust the foot to the uneven ground in both these movements inversion and eversion the entire part of the foot that is below the talus moves together the movement take place mainly at the subtalar and talo calcaneo navicular joint and partially at the transverse tarsal joints the calcaneum and the navicular bone move medially or laterally around the talus carrying the four foot with them inversion of the foot is accompanied by the plantar flexion of the foot and the adduction of the forefoot eversion is accompanied by dorsiflexion of the foot and abduction of the forefoot the joints involved in inversion and eversion they are subtalar joint otherwise called talo calcaneal joint and talo calcaneo navicular joint these are the main joints which form the movements inversion and eversion and in addition to that there is transverse tarsal joint which includes calcaneo cuboid and talo navicular part of talo calcaneo navicular joint these are the accessory joint that involves in the movement inversion and eversion inversion and eversion takes place in an oblique axis which runs forward upward and medially passing from the back of the calcaneum through the sinus tarsi and to emerge at the supramedial aspect of the neck of talus so this axis passes from the back of calcaneum to the neck of talus supramedial aspect of the neck of talus and this axis is an oblique axis which runs forward upward and medially and this obliquity of this axis partially accounts for adduction abduction plantar flexion and dorsiflexion which are associated with this inversion and eversion range of movements inversion is much more free than eversion the range of movement is appreciably increased in plantar flexion of the foot because in this position the narrower posterior part of the trochlear surface of the talus or superior surface of the talus the narrow posterior part of the superior surface occupies the tibio fibula socket in this position the slight side to side movements of the talus are permitted muscles producing movements inverters of the foot 
they are the tibialis anterior and the tibialis posterior. So, which is assisted by the flexors, that is flexor hyosis longus and flexor digitorum longus. So, the main inverters of the foot, they are the tibialis anterior and the deep muscles of the back of leg. Eversion, it is mainly by the lateral compartment of the foot or the muscles of the lateral compartment. They are the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis and which is also assisted by the peroneus tertius. So these are the muscles that is producing the inversion and eversion. So inversion is by the tibialis anterior and the tibialis posterior assisted by the flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus. Eversion is by peroneus longus and peroneus brevis which is assisted or helped by peroneus tertius. Pronation and supination of the foot. These are really the components of the movements of inversion and eversion. In pronation and supination, the forefoot, that means the distal part of the tarsus and metatarsus, moves on the calcaneum and the talus. The medial border of the forefoot is elevated in supination, which is thus it is a part of inversion, while the reverse occurs in pronation. These movements can take place chiefly at the transverse tarsal joint and partially at the small intertarsal, tarsometatarsal and intermetatarsal joints. So, this joint, pronation and supination, which are the components of inversion and eversion, but this movement chiefly occurs at the transverse tarsal joints. The forefoot, which moves on the calcaneum and the talus. There are some limiting factors of inversion and eversion. Inversion is limited by the tension of peroni. That means the peroneus muscles. By the tension of that, the inversion is limited. And the tension of cervical ligament, they also limit inversion. And then eversion, eversion is limited by the Tibialis anterior, tibialis posterior by the tension of this and tension of the deltoid ligament. So, inversion is limited by the tension of peroneum and eversion is limited by the tension of the tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior. Inversion and eversion greatly help the foot in adjusting to uneven and slippery ground. When feet are supporting the body weight, these movements occur in a modified form called supination and pronation, which are forced on the foot by the body weight. Flexor retinaculum, it is 2.5 cm broad. It extends from the posterior border of the medial malleolus to the medial side of the heel, which runs downward and backwards. This is a thickened band of fascia, which is seen on the medial side of the ankle. It retains the tendons, vessels and nerves in position as they pass from the back of leg to the sole of foot. So it is attached anteriorly or superiorly to the posterior border and the tip of the medial malleolus, posteriorly or inferiorly to the medial tubercle that is seen on the plantar surface of the calcaneum. 
The structures that is passing deep to the flexor retinaculum from medial to lateral side are the tendon of tibialis posterior, tendon of flexor digitorum longus, posterior tibial artery and its branches, posterior tibial nerve and its terminal branches, and tendon of flexor hallucis longus. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is a clinical situation in which the tibial nerve is compressed in tarsal tunnel. As a result, there will be a burning, tingling and pain in the sore of foot show of drop afterwards the compression. Surgical division eliminate the symptoms.